Do you feel bad about some of the people that got burnt along the way? Can you name me the names of the people? And I'll tell you if I feel bad about them. It's not easy interviewing a skilled charlatan. You've been described as a con woman. Very good con artist. I don't see myself as such. You don't think you've conned anybody? No. How are you doing, Mary Contrary? Great. How's it going, Starfish? Great. Well, I have a great story cooked up for us today. This one is a popular one, and it's soon coming to a Netflix near you. Ooh, and your, I'm excited. And, and your couch. So we need more of that. <laughs> yeah. We, In these I time. Think, yeah, I think we do. So this story is about a lady from, I think she hails from Germany, and Basically, what she did was she moved to New York in uh, 2013. And I think it all started in 2016, I believe. This whole story took place. So she goes by the name of Anna Delvey. And what she did, I mean, at first when I saw the story, I was like, oh, man, finally someone duped the rich, you know. This is going (laughs) to be really good because you know how I love... We do. We know how much you love the rich, Mary. Oh, yeah. I just, love them. I love them. And I, when, I'm, when anyone can dupe them, I'm, I'm all for it, right? So. <laughs> right. <laughs> so this crazy lady basically fabricated who she was. Let's give a, a little background on who she is. So she went by the name of Anna Delvey. Her real name is Anna Sorokin. Oh, yes. Anna. Okay. Yeah. So she changed her last name for this, but she kept her first name. So... Anyway, okay. so she Easier actually to keep up the lie, maybe I think so. Yeah, maybe that was the reasoning behind that. So she was born in a town close to Moscow in 1991. And it was like a working class town. She was one of two children. Her father goes by the name of Vandem Sorokin. He worked as a truck driver. And their mother owned a small convenience store before becoming a housewife. Then they moved to Germany in 2007 when Anna was about 16 years old. So she attended a few schools. Uh, Her classmates say that she was just a quiet girl that had a difficult time with the German language, but I probably would too. I'm not going to lie. That's a hard Hard language. language. Yeah. 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 It's awful sounding too. I just hear like, I can't, you know, (laughs) I mean, I do have a few German punk bands that I like to listen to, but that's another story for another time. Anyway, so <laughs> everybody knows that one, right? <laughs> well, it's actually they're called the Die Lederhosen. Oh, oh, great! Okay. Which translates to the dead pants. Uh huh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. They're actually a really fun band to listen to. But anyway, so then she graduated from high school in like 2011, and she moved to London. So she attended what is it, Central Saint Martins. She returned to Germany, so she didn't actually attend it or something. I don't know. So she worked for an intern for a public relations firm. Then she moved to Paris, and that's where she was involved in an internship for the French magazine called Purple. So apparently that's a popular fashion magazine. And then that's the time that she started calling herself Anna Delvey. Okay. So what did she do? Well, then she moved to New York in 2013, and she started making a bunch of friends. Um... And she kept telling him that she had a $60 million trust fund, which was approximately, what, 80 80 million or something? I don't know. She said it was held in overseas banks and would cover all of her lavish lifestyle and hotel stays. Hmm. So what she did was she started to kind of befriend a bunch of people, you know, like she would go to parties where rich people would be. I think she probably learned a lot from her internship with the Purple Magazine. Mm. Just kind of how to, what fashion the rich wear, you know, like what kind of things that they buy, what they do. And so then she started to become them, you know, like I really think she believed that she was one of them. Mm. So, so then what she was doing is she was starting to kind of make a bunch of friends in a bunch of different social circles. She was an easy person to talk to. People didn't know a whole lot about her. I guess she made up a bunch of different stories about what her family actually did. Like she said, her dad was in the solar panel industry. And then he was like an oil guy. 
out of Russia. And I think she made up a couple other stories about where her family got all this money. Uh, So she started staying at hotels like she was kind of living there, which I guess for the rich, it's not abnormal for them to have like month long stays at hotels like in New York and stuff. I guess that's a normal Mm. thing. Sure. So what's amazing to me in this whole thing is that she kept telling the hotel that she would wire them money to stay. And I mean, this was like months and months of her staying. Like some of these rooms were like 700 a night, you know? And so she's staying at these like super fancy hotels in like Soho, New York. I think some one was the Beekman Hotel, West Downtown, the Meridian. I don't know where any of this is. I've actually never been to New York. Um, hmm. So I have no idea where all this stuff is. But it's apparently there's just really nice part of like upper class part of New York. So but yeah, it's amazing to me is that like they never asked for a credit card, nothing. So she's just like ringing Jeez. up all this stuff. You have to have a credit card for like a Motel 8. Right. Well, apparently if you're a rich person, I guess they don't care about that. I guess. I, I don't know. That's kind of crazy. Put on a fancy dress and walk into a hotel in New York <laughs> and you get it for free, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I learned a new way to get free hotels. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, put your prod on and go waltzing into these hotels in New York and you can stay for free. Wow. Yeah, so crazy. So she's up staying in these hotels. So she befriends this lady that goes by the name of Nefatari Davis. And she goes by Neff. So she is a hotel concierge at one of these hotels. And I I don't recall which one because there was just so many different. I think she stayed at like three or four different ones during her whole stint of this. So what she would do is she walked in with a bunch of cash, you know, like she acted like she had like just millions of dollars in banks, bank accounts, like nothing mattered. You know, Neff said she would spend money like you wouldn't believe, like she would just throw money out there. So whenever she wanted them to bring up all of her packages up to her room, because she'd be going out and shopping everywhere at all the fashion stores in New York, all the expensive brands, you know, $400 t-shirts all the things. So she would, they, I guess that she said the hotel staff would like fight over who was going to bring package up. Cause she would give him a hundred dollar bill to like t- take her packages up to a room. Right. So she kind of befriended Neff during all this. So what she would do is she would smooth with Neff cause she's the concierge at this one hotel she was at. So she would buy her like spa treatments and they would go to, you know, they would go see like this expensive personal trainer you know it's like three hundred dollars an hour Mm. so i mean she was spending like big big money big money sure so making her friend think oh she has money yeah yeah so then she started throwing all these parties with all you know like she was considered like a new york socialite Mm. um she doesn't claim that's what she was but she kind of was doing that and so she would you know some of these people that she met that are kind of rich she would get them to foot some of these bills for her Hmm. at the at the parties or like she she'd try to meet all these people and what she was trying to do is she wanted to buy this piece of real estate that she was trying to turn into like an art i i don't know if it was like a gallery it was like she wanted to put some shops in it and stuff so she was trying to like secure this multi-million dollar like uh loan for it like 25 million i think hmm and so she was obviously having a hard time. So she tried to talk to all these affluent people and they would know somebody who knew somebody, you know, who knew somebody that would get her in touch with some people. And she was like really close to actually securing that loan, which is kind of pretty badassly, kind of amazing that someone would just let some illegitimate person like that, who's basically a, a faker, <laughs> try to secure a $25 million loan, right? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So for like a real estate. So then she met this woman that goes by the name of Rachel Williams. She was at, I guess, one of these parties that Anna was involved in. And at the time, you know, I've seen a couple interviews with this Rachel Williams. Actually, she did an interview with uh, Dr. Oz. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. He's like getting into the crime real crime and stuff and i'm like aren't you like a heart surgeon or something dude like now you're doing all this weird interviews with people for crimes like it doesn't make any sense because he's getting sued for all the medical stuff bad <laughs> medical advice he's doing <laughs> he said so now he has to move in into a different genre yeah yeah so apparently 
um, she interviewed with him on, on the show. Cause she's actually also writing a book about her whole thing. So here's what happened with poor Rachel Williams. So she was just a photo editor for Vanity Fair magazine in New York. Okay. So I don't think she was making like tons of money or anything right. like that. You right. know, probably actually, just, I have, I have a video of her talking about her experience. Oh yeah. It's just a minute or so. Totally. Hotel had had enough. The men just stood in our villa and they were waiting for her to fix it. And they want payment. Yes, they want a credit card that works right there right now. Like they're done waiting. Rachel tells us she's fearful of being stranded in a foreign country. So she offers her credit cards as a temporary backup, even though she can't afford it. I leave early on Friday morning. When I land, I get a text message that the whole bill is being charged to my cards. How much? $62,000. $62,000. How did you even wrap your mind around that? It was such a, a complex, paralyzing moment for me. She owed me more money than I made in a year. So that was Rachel talking in her own voice about how this was worth more than her entire salary. For one yeah, year. yeah. So <clears throat> what happened was that Anna wanted to go to, I forget which country they were going to. Um, it was Morocco? Yeah, I think it was Morocco. So they were staying at this place that was like $7,000 a night. <laughs> <laughs> and so Anna's cards kept getting declined. Like, that's always oh. her story. Like, oh. oh, the money's on the way. It's being wired from my, can you just cover this for me? Right. Like she had private jet companies, like believing this lie that it's like she has this money that's going to be wired to them. So Rachel, poor Rachel, had to put all of this under her cards in her name. You know, this whole whole lavish trip. Like Anna paid this videographer to go with them. Um, I think the personal trainer went with them as well. I don't have her name. I couldn't figure that out. But yeah, so she went with them. And so Rachel left early to come back. And then she comes back and finds out, like, because they're basically telling Anna that they're going to arrest her if she, they don't receive payment. And so they ended up putting everything on Rachel's cards. And so Anna promised that she was going to pay Rachel back, but she never did. Right, so, of course, because, you know, Rachel yeah. had no reason to believe she wouldn't pay her back. She's rich. Yeah, so she's like, okay, well, as long as, because um, Anna promised she was going to wire her $70,000 to cover everything. <laughs> right, wow. so... Of course, that never came to fruition. And like she kept texting uh, Rachel and told her to come over to her apartment. She was going to give the money to, you know, she was going to have a cashier's check waiting for her. Of course, she goes over to the hotel that she's at. And of course, she doesn't have a check and acts like it got lost. Mm -hmm. So then after that, Rachel reported her. Uh, and so then she got arrested for not paying for a lunch at some ritzy restaurant. And that's where she ends up in court and gets arrested for all of this fraud. Mm. So then it, it all just kind of unravels from there. So she ends up in court. And unfortunately, I don't know what the hell the jury's problem was, but they did not believe like they didn't think that Rachel Williams should get paid back. Like they wow. said, they said, well, she put it on her card. So, yeah, like what the hell's wrong with these people? It's like this poor girl is just like caught up in all this bullshit. Yeah, right. You know, on the hook for 62,000. Oh, well you gave her the card. Sorry. Yeah. Like, so she was found guilty of, of course, all the hotel fraud and the other fraud for like the private jet companies and all that other stuff, but not these poor people. And probably, I don't know if Neff was involved in it. Like, I don't know if she w ended up on the hook for maybe some of the meals or something. So here's what happened. So Anna gets sentenced. I think it was like three to five years jail originally. And so she's in jail. Netflix offers her a deal for the series that's probably going to come out sometime later this year or maybe this summer. I'm not sure. Yeah. They're, work they're working on it right now. So it was for like 320000 or something like that. And so luckily, the state of New York has a law where, and I think this should be a national law, by the way, where if you commit a crime like this, you can't profit from it. Oh, nice. So all yeah. of that money had to go to pay like the victims. And poor Rachel, I, I don't know that she got any. I do think, though, that she's been made whole. She mentioned that like her American Express worked with her on some of that debt. And then she has a book coming out. And I think she's getting money, too, from doing a series, I think, on HBO. So I think hmm. Rachel's going to actually end, out, end up pretty ahead in the deal 
of all this stuff because it's like such a crazy story. Right. So, but Miss Little Miss Anna is in jail. So she got released early. I don't even know how or why. She got released February 11th of this year. So now, as soon as she got released, the ICE is detaining her because, you know, she came to this country and committed crime. So they're like, okay, now we're going to deport you because you're a felon, you know? Well, and also she did this interview like an idiot with the BBC. <laughs> right. I have some audio on that too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's listen to Anna. When you got away with something, when you achieved something, when, when you slipped under the radar and didn't have to pay, was it thrilling? Absolutely not, because in my head, I never thought that I was cheating or getting away with anything. In my head, like, any money that would borrow from them, they would be getting back. I felt like they portrayed me as, like, someone who is very manipulative, which I don't think I am. And I was, like, never really, like, too nice of a person. I was never, like, really trying to talk my way into anything. I kind of just told people what I want in, in, like, they either gave it to me or not, and I just moved on. Why do you think so many people believed you then? What, what was it in your personality that could convince people? Um, I don't know. I think, like, maybe believed I was smart and I was working on something that was, that could have, like, a great potential and that would be successful. I don't know. I don't feel like it has much to do with my personality. I guess, I like, I really believed in myself and I, what I was doing. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's hard to explain. I guess, like, people just see, like, I'm talented and I'm focused and I work hard and um, I could make them a lot of money. She also said that she believes that, yeah, crime apparently paid off for her, you know, because when the lady asked her, like, so did this all pay off? And she's like, well, apparently. And so the ICE people were, like, arguing. She didn't learn anything in that year, in her years in jail. She needs to stay here. The problem, too, is, like, someone like that, is an absolute danger to society. And mm-hmm. there, there's actually, she talked about how she met people in prison that were there because they stole people's identities. So now she knows how to steal people's identities, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, we definitely don't want this lady here. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> right? Well, and she makes it seem like, oh, I just convinced people to do things and they just did it for me. Oh no, I'm so sorry. But really, she like falsified documents to get those loans. She, yeah. She falsified saying she had $60 million. And yeah. so don't play, oh, I just a so- sorry little girl. No. Yeah. Sorry. I don't mean to be like, you know, against <laughs> Russians or Germans or whatever, but give me a break, lady. Right. No. <laughs> She just has that, like, innocent little girl thing. Ugh. Oh, yeah. It's so terrible. So. But crazy, too. And I'm just like, crazy. wow, how could you possibly just walk into these hotels, these spas, all these places and just be like, oh, yeah, someone else is just going to pay for it. You know, I'm going to make them rich. So it doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. Just like sort of narcissistic uh, sense that you, you know, like, oh, it's just a smart person. And they just thought that I was doing this amazing work. So they were willing to help me by giving me free things along the way. And, yeah. and there's like uh, absolute no admission to guilt. Like even Rachel Williams said in court, she smirked at her. Yeah. And, of course. You know, like just absolutely does not care whose lives she impacts with any of this stuff. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would have been happier if it was like rich people. I'm sorry, but I would be. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I mean, but I feel unfortunately kinda, it wasn't. Yeah. I feel not very bad for those stupid hotels because right. I have tried to, I mean, you know, like I don't come from money at all. I didn't even know you needed a credit card to get in a hotel. I'm just going to admit that. And so <laughs> right. I went on a road trip with a bunch of cash and I was just like, they're like yeah no we don't take cash and i was like oh like i said they won't even take it for a hotel eight motel eight much less these i can't believe they wouldn't make them have a credit card for these fancy seven thousand dollars a night hotels or seven hundred dollars whatever i guess seven thousand was in morocco but still yeah like even the one in morocco how the hell did you get that oh i guess she could have put the credit card down first and then yeah. they tried to run it. But yeah. don't they hold it? Don't they hold a certain amount on there? I, I would think so for especially a place like that. I I would think after this, like, I'm sure all their policies are going to change. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> they're going to be like, OK, no credit card, no stay. Bye. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just insane to me. Like, I've never heard of this, like someone doing this. And that's kind of crazy. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And amazing in a, in an aspect. I'm just like, wow. I, yeah. I mean, I never would have thought to like do stuff like that ever. No, I mean, sure. Like, you know, maybe dressed up a little bit nicer and then gotten slightly better treatment at like certain places. Like, oh, I'm just dressed up nicely. And so I'm getting free coffee. And it's kind of like how they give wealthy people and famous people things that they don't need. And they and then they charge the poor people for it. You know, like, oh, here's a free thing. <laughs> right. So, you sure figured out that loophole. And in that way, I mean, if you look at her on Twitter, she's a little bit of a hero to some people because she kind of grifted the rich. But right. these these people weren't really rich. And No, not the people, not some of these people. It's like she was still going after these people that were just in the working class, which sucks about it. Right, right. This lady just worked for Vanity Fair, so... She probably thought she was rich, but you don't really make a lot of money working for Vanity. I mean, it's just a fancy magazine. It doesn't make you make money doing it. Right. And, uh, you know, she befriends Rachel and buys her like all these probably some meals and some other things. And so Rachel's like, oh, wow, this chick is really cool, you know, because like she was saying, like Rachel said, like all of her friends are getting married and going away. So she was kind of by herself, you know, so she's trying to make friends, which is really hard to do. I get it. Especially right. if you're, as, you know, as a, a mid twenties to thirty year old, you know, it's hard to make friends when you're older. So I totally can like sympathize with poor Rachel in this whole story. Yeah, on that, you know, you're just like, wow, this rich lady from, you know, she's totally cool, and we have so much fun, and then she does all this crazy stuff. Right. Right. Well, but like I, yeah, I don't know how she thought she could just go to Morocco and have someone who makes less than 62,000 a year like foot the bill for all that well, that's insane you know, anna seemed to have been paying for things along the way it makes me wonder if she had fraudulently secured some small amount of money so that or she probably she, had- she probably got like a bunch of credit cards and took out a bunch of you know cash advances mm. you know to to pay mm. people cuz you can you can do that too i mean If you have really good credit, you can go and, you know, do stuff like that and just get a crap ton of cash, you know, cash advance. That's really horrible to do. Right. I I cringe at that being a financial person, but (laughs) yeah, really, I, um, I think that's probably what she did. And I'm sure we'll find out more, you know, from this inventing Anna series that's going to come out on Netflix. So it'll be interesting to see all the details come out. Right. Because right. I'm sure there's many, but like, what a con artist of the yeah. century. Right. Like that. She did it in another country, too. I mean. Yeah. So you're stuck here now. You committed a crime on our soil and you're not one of our citizens. So, I mean. I mean, I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> like, Slender, but She's probably going to make money off of this somehow, you know, because I, I think it was like over $300,000 or something that she owed to like all the banks and the private says jet 275,000. Yeah. In the, in the press release from the, the DA. Yeah. State of New York. Yeah. So I'm sure all that will get paid off and then she'll probably make money after that, especially if she goes back to Germany, who knows what she'll do there. Of course, her family's like hiding from her. They're like, Oh my God, you know, cause her dad's just like a truck driver. Okay. Right. And he's like, I don't want to be involved in any of her stuff. <laughs> Seriously, what an embarrassment to the family. A hundred percent. Yeah, I don't even know what I would do. I'd be like, wow, I can't believe I raised a kid like that. I don't know. You do wonder like what she was thinking and whether she was really trying to, because this whole scam she was trying to do with this art thing, I mean, was it like really pure of heart or was she just trying to get money so she could just live fancy? That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, yeah. Like just trying to get... I'd like just trying to find someone to fund all of her crazy lifestyle. Right. I'm sure we'll find out one day she was inspired by like some movie or something, you know, like, yeah, I just thought I could go and fool the stupid Americans (laughs) (laughs) and their fancy hotels. All I have to do is just use this fancy voice and wear nice clothes. And I (laughs) I fool all the people. (laughs) Well, that was a great one. Yeah, Mary absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. one of my favorite ones. Yep. Fraud and deceit. So if you have any other stories like this, please put hashtag Soho Grifter, S-O-H-O, 
G-R-I-F-T-E-R, or Fake Heiress. And uh, we'll look at more stories like this because this is crazy. It seems so easy to happen, too. You know, everybody's so anonymous. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That we would love to hear your uh, other stories that you'd like to hear a little bit more about. And we are going to keep tracking Anna and see where she goes. Absolutely. Well, thanks for being with us today, everybody. Have a great one. Thanks, everyone, for listening to Real Talk. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen. We look forward to having you on our next one.